Hello everyone, welcome to Center of Light, Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Tonight my guest is Miss Kak Young and we're speaking about how to raise something. People, issues, your animals. Usually I go into a dialogue for a little while and do some adverts and stuff like that. But because my guest has a very limited time, we're going to get right down to the guest. And I don't think we're even going to take a a pause we're just gonna go right on through because I think she says she has an hour so let me tell you a little bit about my beautiful guest today I love this lady and she is a pistol I love that word I hope she don't take offense to it no she's probably like thank you Keith how to raise something people issues animals Kat Young is my guest Kat Young is a successful television director and producer who earned a PhD in natural health and is a doctor of both clinical hit hypnotherapy and neuropathy she was one of the first women to join the directors guild of america as a director and was a prominent member of the women in the in film board of directors cac excels as a leader and an innovator in her field cac created the heart easy program to save the lives of people everywhere following her heart following a heart attack in 2006 at age 57 the Heart Easy program is a system of nutritionally sound, delicious meals that promote heart health and long life. The Heart Easy program also includes an education in nutrition and hair raising facts about what Americans are unconsciously eating that contributes to heart disease. CAC has won awards for television shows she has created, produced, and directed. She was Vice President of Television Production and Development at Universal Studios Hollywood and ran her own company for 25 years, serving clients such as Procter & Gamble, JCPenney, Rubbermaid, and Corning. She founded the Showtime Comedy Club Network and has worked with Kelsey Grammer, Rosie O'Donnell, Tim Allen, and Ellen DeGeneres. Her television credits include General Hospital, the Showtime Comedy Club, Network, The Mo Show, The Show, Mike and Maddie, Are You Hot, The People's Choice Awards, Showtime's Comedy Club All-Stars, In Concert, ABC, Concerts for MTV, and VH1, and Politically Correct. Check her out. As well as having an active television career as a producer, producer director, and studio executive. CAC has dec decades of marketing public relations, and media experience. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, my friend, Miss Kat Young. How are you doing, Angel? Thank you, Keith. I'm doing very well. And thank you for that nice introduction. My God, I sound like I'm 150, don't I? <laughs> well, you have the wisdom of it, darling. You've lived a lot of life. You've I lived have. a lot of life, and you're doing a lot of things that bring you lots of joy. Oh, that's th thank you. And you too. You know, one of those joys is you and being on your show and being able to share uh, your majesty with the world, which I am a deep fan because I've been able to read your books and uh, communicate with you. So it's lovely to make your acquaintance once again. Blessings every time. I think you and I have had these conversations twice before. Would that be accurate, close, right on money? 
I think, yeah, twice, yeah, at least, sure. And thousands of emails. <laughs> yes. Cat, let's get right down to it. Let's talk about how to raise something. Since we have, I'll let you pick out of the lot. We have people, issues, and animals. This is your platform, darling. Where would you like to lean into first? Okay. Well, I I must say that when you asked me to be on the show and what you want to talk about, my first thought was, well, I have a book on how to raise a dog, uh, humorous and, and fun, and I have a new book out called The One Minute Cat Manager. And then I thought, well, you have done a beautiful job raising your 14-year-old son, so why don't we talk about how to raise things, how we do that in this world. Everybody is so busy, stressed, trying to meet deadlines all the time. And sometimes we forget how to raise something that we are raising a mirror image in one sense and that we have been given the privilege of this living entity in our life. And so how do we get to the place where they don't irritate us and they don't annoy us by just being exactly who they are? But how do we get to the place where we truly love them, we truly value them, and we are grateful to them for being in our life because they are bringing lessons with them for us every day. Mirror image is probably the key component. You, all of it was delicious, but the mirror image. What do you want this offshoot of you to become, basically? Yes? Exactly. And, and we're all given a, a, you know, time on this earth. And if we are blessed or given or choose to raise something outside of ourselves, then I think we have a spiritual obligation as well as a physical obligation to do the best job we can. And I like to talk about when I talk about this or even the dog that I got, I was a cat person and I sort of on impulse adopted a dog and that dog had a lot to teach me a lot of things that I needed to learn in life and one of the things that I learned or taught myself from my yoga practice was really what I call the no regret breath and that is when you want to react to something that they've done or said or brought into the house, whatever they've done, you take that no regret breath and you think about what do I want the end result to be? And if you answer yourself that you want to that end result to be love, then chances are you're going to choose something that has a lot of grace attached to it. And by grace, I mean something outside of yourself, your own ego, something that comes from another place that guides you and them closer to the core of real, true love, human and divine. Wow. I just did a presentation, CAC, on spare the rod instead of spoil the child. Spare the rod, save the child. Yes. Because this comes down to really, how, in how you act, you can become the biggest hypocrite to ever have walked this earth. Yep. Because if, if you, like you said, when you offer grace to mistakes, bad behavior, erroneous, whatever it may be, if you can't f forgive, if, if forgiveness is a spiritual core principle if you cannot forgive your pet your issue or your child for what they've done and they are the closest to you in your life imagine how you're going to treat someone who is from across town well yeah yeah and if you are a child and you've done something and you don't you may you're going to feel guilty about it you've done something do you want to get smacked around or hit with a newspaper because you wet the floor no, you don't. So you put yourself in the situation, wow, I did break my mom's lamp. Yeah. How would I want to be treated? Do I want education about how not to break a lamp? Or do I want an ass whipping and being sitting to my bedroom for a week about whatever, you know, facing my nose in a corner or whatever? Yeah, and then what do you learn? I think I always like to say, what will this 
person or this animal learn from this encounter with me? Are they going to learn violence? Are they going to learn pain? Uh, because when you look at a dog or a cat, uh, it, you know, I have five cats and two dogs. When you look at them and you see that they don't really remember more than a few seconds, sometimes a minute, and if you have left that impression with them, they're going to forget that. But what they never f forget is how they felt. They will always remember their feelings and their emotions. And so when we operate from grace, or at least try to most of the time. And we take that no regret breath to give us a moment to focus, to decide quickly what we want the outcome to be. And this takes rehearsal. It, you, you're not a good parent overnight. You're not a bad parent overnight. It's all learned behavior. And I think if we want to raise something that is as good as it can be, and as spiritually fulfilled as it can be, then we have to really see that in them. We have to see the unfolding lotus in every creature, in every person, and not try to clam that up or stop that growth. And, and think about what they will experience in the moment, because that is what lasts forever. That's the imprint they take with them. Not whether or not they broke the lamp and they got yelled at. They will remember how they felt, and that will determine the kind of person or the, the kind of animal that walks the earth. That's what you're sending out into the atmosphere. What you want the outcome to be determines your input. There is a saying in the recording industry, trash in, trash out. If you record something on audio tape and you don't get the quality sounds you're looking for, nothing on the back half is going to correct the crap of the garbage you've put into your creation. Trash in, trash out. So right. in order to have the outcome, child, animal, issue, it all determine, it's all dependent upon what you were inputting into the situation. And one, it's not reaction. It's taking conscious action. Would you say so? I would say that it's response, not reaction. Because when you respond to something, that means there's choice involved. When you react, there's only surface ego and emotion in that moment. But the response is the measure of grace. It is the measure of taking that breath. And then you choose a response. And then that's how you place it. That's what you want the outcome to be based on how you respond to the person, the issue, or the animal. And that's where we can learn so much if we just, you know, stop, look, and listen about that. Um, when I talk in my dog book about how to uh, manage a dog or, or actually either a cat or a dog is that the first thing you want to do is, is, is look at them. You want to engage them and their gaze without threatening them because you want to observe them. What state are they in? Are they in a state of fear? Are they in a state of trust? Are they in a state of shame what state are they in and then you listen to them you listen if it's a child you listen you ask for their oh you know what are you feeling now what's going on you check in with them because you could be wrong you 50 percent of the time you could be wrong and you could make a snap judgment you could react and that's not at all what was going on for the child that's not what was what was happening you know you don't know if there was a mini earthquake in the living room and the lamp just fell by itself but all of a sudden the kids playing for it so you have to stop you have to look you have to listen and you have to read them what is their body language telling you what is going on with them that you can pick up that you can uh, I, I don't know, uh, connect to, and then you connect to them. You have to really connect with them. And that's the most success that I've ever had with my animals is when I take the time to really connect with them and find out what's going on for them as best you can. And of course, dogs have different ways of behaving than cats do, but they all will give you back the information, the data that you need to to create the response 
that you choose and that you want. And it is easy because it's like riding a bike. It's like learning how to do any motor skill. So it's hard, it's hard easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's training it? the brain. Training that brain to to respond the way you want it to in a crisis situation so you don't get the uh, emotion, so you don't allow the emotion to get the best of you. You really come from a place of pre-deciding how you want to be, what you want to do, and how you want that person to come out on the other side. So tonight we're talking about how to raise something, people, issues, animals. We treat them all the same, don't we? We decide to raise a situation to its highest potential. All across the board, the playing field is even. You raise a child the same way. You raise an animal the same way. You raise an issue, an issue in your life that has you mired, boogered, drama, whatever's going down that is not yep. so fun and peachy and warm and fuzzy. How, do, how, how to raise it? I've said that if we think about raising children, think about the terminology alone raising a child they don't say beating down a child they talk about raising a child raising them up to a level because what people don't understand what parents many parents sadly most parents at least in the part of the country where i live they have no idea about raising children they call raising children beating them down yeah and so as we raise children what they don't realize is that Children see parents as God. They do. Because they're looking up at their parents like this. You're way the frick up there. And you have all this power. And smite me, you will. Because the last time I know, they're always walking around in eggshells. Because they know that if they get in trouble, the fire is going to come. So, what it worked for me, I was raised that way. And I think I turned out pretty well. Really? Is that your response to me? Really? <laughs> that you're going to use this idea to defend what you have passed down as a lineage to your children? Because when your child is getting smacked around, they don't care about your ideology. They don't care about any of that. They just know how horrible it feels. And it leaves such an amazing imprint. How about a spiritual or emotional whelp? in their life and yeah. it's really hard for them to trust you they may stop what they're doing yes parent you're successful but your goal is not to have your child live unconsciously afraid of you their entire life even if they've grown up as an adult past 21 somewhere around if they don't heal that issue they haven't raised that issue they're still walking around with that emotional whelp well, yes, and I think that what we have to do is grow up sooner. So if we have any leaks in our own personal boat, we need to get them fixed before before we decide to raise something else so that it doesn't become a whipping board for us. It doesn't become a learning experience. It isn't something that we... Um, are working out on. I know so many people in my own life that they have become the surrogate uh, partner for their parent who was divorced or, uh, you know, left behind. And, and the kid ends up being the parent in many cases and doesn't get to grow up, doesn't get to live their life as a child maturing into an adult. So sometimes we take away from our children the things that we think we need. They're there to nurture us they're there to support us and the opposite is really true so we really have to go out and patch our leaky boat before we bring these creatures into our life parenting is a huge responsibility and if if we need a license to drive a car it might be worthwhile considering giving a license to people to parent the child because my goodness you have to pass a few tests and you have to make sure that you're not going to chain them up and link them to the end of a of a bed and starve them just because that's sport for you I think we have to get rid of our own demons before we uh, look to our children or even look to our pets. Uh, there are so many abused pets out there. There are so many abused children, abused women 
all of that. And we need to break that cycle. We need to change that energy. And the way we do it is by taking care of ourselves first. We have to heal ourselves, Keith. And that's what I love about your program is that you are about people healing themselves and getting whole inside. And even if they have children now, they need to also look inside and fix themselves so that they they don't act out and react because they want to respond. Respond is the way you live your life in grace, with grace, and full of grace, which is what is the most beautiful thing about life, is when we can get to the place of grace, then we just kind of glide through life no matter what the weather is. People think parenting ends at 18 or whatever age they determine, 17, 18, or 21 or whatever. You're in it for the long haul, no matter what. I don't care how married and how grown and how many kids and grandkids they got, great-grandma, great-grandpa. You're in it for the long haul. Well, I don't need to do the work. My kids are grown because it, what is that going to change now? Think, no, 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 no. The nut doesn't fall far from the tree. If you decide to go in, If you decide to go inside and respond to those issues and raise those issues, in your life, I don't care if you're 65 years old, naturally, your offspring energetically is going to change with you. Naturally, their children and grandchildren are going to feel the shift in you because you are still God, even though you're the 65-year-old and they're married and grown up. You still carry the matriarchal or the patriarchal weight in the family, and they respond by your authority, whether they're being authoritative or not. It's only relevant because when the tree shifts, it's nuts, it's seeds, it's apples, it's oranges, completely change. You know, science says that if you split uh, an atom in half and you put one part of it over here in this universe and one part of it gazillions of light years away in another universe, and you change one spontaneously, the other one changes just like that. So, I'm sorry, you're in for the long haul. <laughs> and so this applies all across the board for issues, children and our pets, our fur babies. Yeah, I think so. And and if we want to talk about an issue, for example, I mean, you don't, I just don't think that you get ahead by attacking the other side any more than you would by attacking your child or your pet. You go into a situation where you defend your issue by making it so irresistible that everybody wants to be part of that. They want to follow you. They want to follow your god likemanship. They want to be in that realm of grace with you. And so they will naturally come over to your side if you present it in such a way that it is uplifting, that it is, in fact, raising the issue, raising the best. People respond naturally to the best. The body always moves towards healing itself. So we can't not heal uh, until we die, until we're back in part of the earth. But that's the natural tendency is towards good, towards the goodness of all. And so when people, when we shine that light brightly and we make it attractive to people, they will follow not by putting somebody down, not by screaming at them, not by belittling them, but by raising up the issue that we believe in from our heart. And that's how we move forward as, uh, you know, as a race, as a generation, as, as people. That's how we do it. We don't do it by kicking anybody in the face. I love what you said by nature. We hear people are just in passing say human beings by nature are just terrible. No, they're not. Human beings by nature are divine. The monkey mind that they've engaged in via the ignorance that was passed down as an unlit torch from generation to generation to generation is what muddles and stifles the, the blossoming of any flower, any flower flowering potential in one's life. I mean, who wants to be around a parent for, of a fur baby or a parent of a child or a divine parent if you are supposedly a divine child? Who wants to be around something that's going to, you know, just break you in half? You know, my, you don't understand my children. I may not understand your children, but I'm starting to understand you pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? 
And I think the best thing we can do for our humans and our our pets is to teach them self-love because when they love themselves, they get closer to the divine and they are really able to stand on their own two or four feet, as the case may be. But when we teach them self-love, now, of course, we have to know what self-love is ourselves, so we have some work to do. If we loathe ourselves, if we find ourselves not worthy, if we're constantly putting ourselves down, then we have to do that work. And it might be in the middle of the night in the quiet of our own bedroom. It might be uh, at a church. It might be in a meditation group. But it's got to be somewhere because that doesn't happen by itself. We have to fall in love with ourselves more and more each day. And then as we do that, we can reflect that love back out into the world and to the people that we have been uh, blessed with. A dear friend of mine, dear friend, center of light acquaintance, phenomenal. Oh, my God, is this man highly intelligent? Oh, he's connected as well, but he is just off the chart intelligent. His name is Robert Tennyson, Tennyson Stevens. He says that any thought that you select that passes in your conscious life stream, any thought you select that does not contain the highest ideal and potential contains self-sabotage. When it comes down to loving yourself, yeah. one thing you can do is become such an aware individual that as an observer from an observer perspective, you can see those things move through your experience, thoughts and feelings without becoming attached. So now that you are able to respond versus react and getting caught in some current that's pulling you in, my child broke the lamp, my dog peed the floor, and you get all these things get out of whack, and the next thing you know, you get drugged into the energy. You are actually pulled into the energy because by conscious choice, you would never say, well, let me go whip thy dog with a newspaper really loudly to scare the terrorism. It's terrorism yeah. because the dog and the child knows that the last time something came up, they knew mom or dad's energy shifted. From that moment, no ass whipping is needed. They are in sheer terror. Yeah, and and why? I mean, what, we don't want to live in terror. So why would we put our children or pets into terror as well. I mean, I have this big thing about the 4th of July, and I think it's great if people want to go watch fireworks somewhere down by the water or someplace. But the people that then do it in their backyards and terrify their pets and, you know, and their little kids as well, but terrify the pets and send them running under the bed. Ah, ha, ha. Isn't that funny? No, it's not funny. These little beings are sensitive and they have hearing three and five times uh, better, stronger than ours, and so they're much more sensitive, and it affects their nervous system. So we're taking years off their life when we go have uh, 20 minutes of fun in the street, and I don't understand why people don't understand that. I just, I think it's amazing that that they don't get it or they don't respect their animals enough to, uh, to maybe just go to the beach and watch it and, and leave the peace and quiet at home. Uh, looking at the chat room right now, Sana says, Hello, everyone. It's storming here. Doggy is scared. Exactly what you just said. Boom, 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 boom. You're sitting in your house with the level of conscious awareness you have. Parallel, parallel that to whatever level the dog or the creature has. And you hear boom, boom, boom going on. You think there is war that was just waged in your neighborhood. Right. If you hear bombs going off in your neighborhood... Don't tell me you're not going to crouch down and go look for a place to a piece of shelter to hide under. Right. And I think what we can tell her is that Rescue Remedy, which is a Bach flower, if you have that on hand and you drop a few drops of water, uh, every time there is some kind of a big noise or, or something that goes on or a traumatic moment, that vibrational medicine will help your dog a lot. I have my cats and dogs on it now because we live in a, the zone where the Thomas Fire ravaged our neighborhood two years ago. And now there's nothing but construction and big trucks and banging and saws and, and it's, it's pretty intense. So I have a, all of us. <laughs> We're all on Rescue Remedy because it helps vibrationally kind of just calm the nervous system. And I think uh, pets really respond to that very nicely. 
You live in Ventura? I do. Uh, do you possibly, I've, wanted, I've actually wondered this for years being a musician, do you have any knowledge about the story from America? Ventura Highway in the sunshine. That song, do you know anything about that? Is it related to that city? Oh, yeah, of course, because when you leave Los Angeles, you know, you can go on Route 66, which is east, or you can go up north on Ventura Highway. And Ventura itself was a big beachy place, a big hippie, surfy beachy place uh, in the 60s and 70s. And that's where everybody got out of town and went to. So it was a, it was a, it signifies freedom. It signifies getting away and it signifies just being something other than you uh, need to be uh, nine to five. Let me ask you this. One of the lyrics are, there's a free wind blowing through your hair. Your day surround your daylight there. What is it? And then they go into uh, alligator lizards in the air. Any idea what the heck that is? Well, I would think that'd probably be LSD. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be my guess. And Things this came from the great. late 60s, so it now it yeah, makes all sense. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, but I know Ventura <laughs> Highway, that's, you know, you just get out of town, bro. You get out of town, it's not so hot, it becomes much more uh, breezy, and there is wind in your hair, and it's just a great place to hang out and relax. And, you know, everybody's equal in Ventura. Seasons crying, no despair, alligator lizards in the air. And they didn't call me. <laughs> so, Kat, we've been talking a lot tonight. My, tonight, everyone, my guest is Miss Kat Young. And we're speaking about how to raise something, people, issues, and animals. We've been hitting a lot on the negative stuff of the don'ts. And that's cool. we got to bring to a, a place of awareness so we look at, uh-oh, I can identify with that thing I've been doing and maybe I shouldn't. Let's talk a little bit about more of what we can do, should do, that would bring us into the greatest possibility of not really per se raising a child, an animal, or an issue. It's really about you becoming a blissful human being. And when you do, everything else trickles down and begins to shift in your life. How, but all that being said, how do we become better parents of issues, our life, our fur babies, and our children? Let's move into that a little. Okay. Well, I think we have to look first at body, mind, and soul. And are we taking care of our body to the best possible way? Are we filling our mind with positive thoughts? Or are we watching the news 24-7 and buying into what they're telling us is going on? Because that's just a bunch of facts. That's just a way to get ratings. What's really going on is powerful people are on board. You know, uh, David Hawkins says that in the past 20 years, the vibration of the world has raised itself 7%. Now, that is, if you look at the Dalai Lama, who is at about 1,970 vibrational points to, to 1,000, and the rest of the world is, is like, 200 and under that we have raised the vibration 7% in the past 10 years. So that means that the prayer workers and that the, 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 the grace workers are actively making change and we can be part of that movement. And the way we do that is paying attention to the entity that we have been given our body, our mind, and our soul and that means eating the right foods that are helpful to the planet and not harmful that means exercising and and that means you don't have to be a gymnast but you do need to move your body you do need muscles were meant to move and so we do need to move it and i love tai chi and qigong and yoga and the disciplines that really connect body mind and soul and for your soul you have to practice you have to have a spiritual practice and stick to it and that starts with Framing in the morning what you want your day to be, affirming that, praying throughout the day, remembering who you are, remembering that you are divine, remembering that you are connected to the spark of life. And then you want to end your day the same way, being grateful for the day and 
take an assessment of what lessons you've learned. And the first thing I hear from people that I say, oh, I don't have time for that. Yeah, you do. You have time to make your life exactly what you want it to be. And that's the beauty. You just have to do it. And if we don't do it, then we will find ourselves 80 years old going, what the heck happened? That really went so fast. But to be thoughtful, to be resourceful, to be somewhat disciplined about your life, because it's not going to come around again the same way. So make it what you want it to be. Don't react to what is being given you. Respond to life itself. Respond to the things that you were called to do. Respond to people. Respond to things. Turn off all the digital devices and go inside. Go listen to yourself. Use a pendulum. Get your answers from the God within, not from your telephone, not from the news, but really make an effort to hone yourself, body, mind, and soul. And when you do that, you have a life worth living and writing about and sharing and passing on, which is all we can do is be the best we can be and hone our instrument and then pass that along through the channels of love and light. You've mentioned how people may come back with the response. I just don't have time. No, the truth is you're just not interested. But when you become a fire and effulgence of 10,000 suns, myself, CAC, many people, even including many of you, there is 24 hours doesn't become 24 hours in a day anymore. People go, well, I don't have time. When you do what you love, if love is infinite, love will create time. You will be in no time. It is, seems like your day lasts longer. You ha you're playing more in the garden of your soul, which is an infinite place. From the chat room, Debbie meet CAC, CAC meet Debbie. She says, my cat's in my house, or basically, I'm going to sum this up, scared and upset because there's a lots of construction going on. Where can I get the rescue remedy and what is it, essential oil? Basically, where can she find more information about how to get this powerful stuff for her little fur baby when it's scared to death? All right. Well, where you get it is you can go to a health food store or you can go online. There are a lot of things. It's spelled uh, B-A-C-H, Bach Flower Remedy and Rescue Remedy. It's in a lot of health food stores, and it's in a lot of um, other stores as well now. It's really branching out. But Rescue Remedy is very helpful. And my new book, uh, w which I'm just writing now, just finishing the editing on, is called Natural Healing for Cats, Combining Bach Flower Remedies and Behavioral Therapy. And it's going to be very inexpensive. Look for it in about two to three weeks on Amazon and that will give you not only uh, information about rescue remedy but it will give you about uh, the other remedies too that can help your cats because we don't know why they're scared but it, I lay out the behavioral mm -hmm. patterns that you can look at that will tell you what's going on with your cat and that will be very helpful I really believe that the Bach flower remedies are gifts to us and my mission is to spread that information as widely as I can so people begin to use them for all their pets and themselves so um, please get some rescue remedy um, just look online or in your health food store and let me know how you do Cat, I have a phenomenal idea for you, Miss TV Show Creator, Producer, Director. All right. <laughs> With your wisdom, instead of, we can do an opposite. Instead of cat, my cat from hell, we can call it my cat from heaven. That way you can bring up this new idea, this new model versus, <laughs> you can show all the good behaviors that everyone that comes on your show has blissful kitties. And everybody, ooh, I want some khaki young. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, so our listen audience, viewing audience can find you. Can you share with uh, us how we can find more about you? Her soon-to-be future four books. Yes, when you have that kind of fire, you reproduce. How can we find you and your your scrum delicious stuff there? 
Well, I'm just finishing my 20th book this month. <laughs> and I just, you'll be able to find, you can ke- keep up with me at kakyoung.com. And that's K-A-C Young, Y-O-U-N-G dot com. And I have all my books listed. Um, also, there's on Amazon, there's an author profile you can take a look at. Um, which is good, but I'm just trying to share all the knowledge I have with the world before my time is up, and I want to put that out there so people can learn how to live better with themselves, love, loving themselves, and then therefore everybody else around them. That's that's all I want to do. I know the consciousness where you live, at least in that part of the world, I'm gonna is a little more elevated than it is here because of the culture, the beliefs. That being said, how many people that you rub elbows are exactly like you in the industry? Is it prevalent throughout the industry? In the industry, no. I remember when I was producing General Hospital and the the night before the Shirley MacLaine series Out on a Limb had been on ABC wow. television. And I came into the control room the next day just, oh, wasn't it great? Wasn't it great? And most of the people in the control room went, she's a nutcase. That was stupid. What do you mean we're all God? What, what, that's the most ridiculous, blasphemous thing I've ever had heard. And so I just kind of sat there and went, whoa, this is a wake-up call. I thought California thinking was a lot more progressive, too. Um, but I think that's only liberal politically, and the rest of the time, there you've still got a ways to go as a collective unconscious out here. However, I do know some wonderful healers and some wonderful people that live in our world, Keith, and I'm blessed to know them and call them my contemporaries. Uh, it's it's just wonderful. Life is very, very good when you choose to make it so. Are you still playing in that arena, the television arena? You are? You are I am. Part. Actually, I just wrote uh, a treatment for a film based on a true story this last weekend, and I have a real good feeling that we're going to make a nice movie out of it. Yeah. I still play that. And then I optioned another book that I want to write a screenplay for. So as soon as I finish these uh, last four, just four books this year, the rest have all been written. Um, I think I'll just (laughs) concentrate on the screenplays and coming back into television because those airwaves are very powerful if you put the right message out. Yes, they are. And it is my future vision, without a doubt, being supported by spiritual avatars from India. Swamji Visva Yogi, blessed am I to be in the physical proximity when he comes to town to actually touch his garment, literally, and to hear him call you by your name and give you an acknowledgement. It's like that puppy dog. It's like that kid. Like that puppy dog in the window that's wagging his tail because he knows he's going to be bought by being acknowledged and recognized. When a divine incarnation sees you and pats you in the back for the work you're doing, something inside of you begins to transform it begins to step to the fore it's kind of like the circle when things begin to join in the final loop and when the beauty begins to recognize its own beauty there's a feedback experience that happens like feedback in the microphone you put a microphone next to a speaker it creates feedback because the information begins to feed within itself well when you begin to have those experiences yourself this curving within this feedback looping infinitely there's an expansion that happens inside. And so I have no doubt that Center of Light, this platform, and the future is going to change into actually a worldwide experience. I have no doubt about that. I've, I've been charged with that mission. And so I get to sit here in this chair every day and create crib websites, talk to beautiful people like you, and do everything that is just nothing but a joy to me. Well, and isn't that the bottom line of what this show is about? Raise the bar. See the person as the glorious person that they are or the glorious pet that they are. Raise the bar and allow them to step up into your vision of them. And then that's the miracle of being blessed by something to care for, something to raise up. So do it. Use raise up as a verb, not a noun. And make that an active an active action towards how you do it. See the best of them that you possibly can and let them step into it just as you have with your guru. Do you have someone you fancy in the form of a guru? Not that all that really matters, but is there someone you really love their teachings and lean into as a uh, someone, someone that's, you know, just always appealed to you? 
Well, yes, there are several. Uh, they are my mentors and teachers, and one of them is Terry Cole Whitaker, who first uh, I first learned about uh, the soul pattern and loving yourself. And the other current one that I love is Carolyn Mace. I think her writing is wonderful. Yeah, I think that it's based in some real truth. Uh, and so, uh, you know, going way beyond what the Catholic teaching is, um, but really into the depths of that. Um, I follow some Sufi leaders. I follow, uh, you know, some some Indian people. Um, I was a follower of Sai Baba for a while. And uh, so I've been on various different paths. Yes. Yeah. And, and so all the metaphors all the people you know I don't see any reason why we all can't do miracles I don't see any reason why we can't heal and clean the water I don't see any limitations with cleaning our air I see no limitations whatsoever between us and the cosmos we are one with it and we are just forgetting how powerful we are we just don't use it otherwise it's there so are we, and we can put it to use. That's why I like to say body, mind, and soul. Keep them all active. Keep them tuned up. Because when you want to go into that fifth dimension, you can. There's a pretty popular meme floating around Facebook right now. It says, stop calling them coincidences, synchronicities, and alignments. In so doing, you don't realize exactly how powerful you really are. <laughs> it's kind of like, it, it's it's... It is true, but it's like we're ready to up our game. We're ready to take another step, uh, up another rung. So instead of, yes, they are synchronities, and yes, these things may be alignments and coincidences, two things coinciding. But when we stop all that nonsense and just say, oh, my God, I just created this thing, versus playing this second role, the co-pilot, why not take the pilot seat is basically what you're saying. That's right. That's right. Fly your own plane. Fly why your own not? plane. Everybody's got wings. Just go ahead. You know, I, I am a former pilot. I, I studied, I, I used to fly planes. I've jumped out of a plane. I've done all that stuff because I wanted to get as close to God as I possibly could. The vision that I had of God is a, being brought up as a Catholic child. But it's also true. When you get up higher, you get above the earth, you have a different viewpoint. And I discovered that with that viewpoint came a responsibility to do something much more active and much more inspirational than just going and taking and, uh, you know, and stuffing my face and enjoying. And I had to now participate in this beautiful thing called the world on every level and inner and outer world. And I needed to do something because I've been given the vision. I saw the sights, and now I need to connect with that and really make my time on Earth worthwhile. Cac, you going out of town? You got to go to work? What are you doing today? Well, I have to go teach a class. I teach Qigong, and this is one of the nights where I'm going to teach it. So um, we go into meditation. We do movement that comes from the soul. We work with the three dantians, the upper, the middle, and the lower. We connect with heaven and earth, and we become the transmitters of the energy between heaven and earth. And so I will go teach an hour of that and people will have an experience of their own bliss. So I love to teach that. <laughs> that is one of my delicious words is bliss. Cat with the top of the hour so we can get you get out of here and going to your passion. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you, Keith. And give us a final thought. Give us a, give us a, give us a, a paragraph in closing, dear. I just want to say, don't be afraid of your own power. You are God-inspired. You are God-driven. You have the power of love, the power of spirit inside you, in every atom, in every breath. And don't be afraid of it. Use it. Begin to experiment with it. See what you can do. See how you can do. Don't think of it as ego. Think of it as God-given divine power and begin to use it. There's so many ways that you can explore that and love yourself because I love you. Website. CacYoung.com. You are a blessing. I love, I love hanging out with you. If I ever come out to, to LA, LA area and where you are, I'm finding you. I'm going to stalk you. <laughs> you bet. You bet. You're welcome. You, be, you contact me anytime you need to. I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you.
wow, I really love being in the presence of this lady's light. She's connected. She's done the work. She's done a lot of work, a lot of creative work, a lot of life self-healing work as to why she's able to extend that to other people. You can't write a $1,000 check to someone if you don't have the money in your account. But you can count on this. I'm always going to be here doing that thing I love. And that thing I love is loving you. Look in the mirror and love yourself. Raise yourself to another level of reality. What else do you have? You came here to be blissful. Do that.